Welcome to One Shared Brain Cell. I'm here, uh, Justin, aka the G Teacher, the Gaming Teacher, along with my buddy uh, Speed, aka Robbie. How's it going, buddy? It's going. Yes, I am Robbie Stanley, if your best friend is also a bucket with your name <laughs> on it. Uh, and if you don't get that reference, you need to play the Stanley Parable. Yeah, this episode might be one that you want to put on pause here for like just a hot minute before uh, before you get everything spoiled like very quickly. <laughs> and let me let me may I interject? Yes, of course. Uh, I, I would say because I'm usually someone that doesn't care about spoilers. Whenever someone in a video is like, go do this for yourself, whatever. I'm like, eh, whatever. It's fine. Honestly, the Stanley Parable is something that I'd heard about. I never really avoided spoilers, but I never was interested enough to find out until we decided, hey, the Deluxe Edition just came out. Let's give it a shot. I'm so glad I knew nothing because going into that game blind was amazing. Yeah. So. Oh, same. Like it. it <laughs> this this game is something special. Um, it really does. Like it, it really does a lot of incredible stuff to just make you think while also laughing your ass off absolutely um by the way um quick quick tangent but it does come back around i promise okay. one i realized earlier today actually as i was you know refreshing myself on the game a little bit um this is one of the most D D like games of a non D D game imaginable because it's an interactive storytelling game yeah that's that's actually a good way of putting it like it, it, it hurt me a little bit because I was like, this is nothing like D and D, but at the same time, it's so like D and D. You just have a railroady DM. It's fine. <laughs> it is a very railroady DM. It's a DM that really wants you to go this particular route, but doesn't necessarily uh, support any other decisions that you make. <laughs> yeah, uh, and. That also tangents into, you might be wondering why this is called Episode 3 and not Episode 2, and also where the second part of the Vox Machina episode is. Yes. Fun fact, when your employer goes out of business and you kept things on their computer and didn't back them up, you're like me, an idiot. <laughs> yeah, you don't, so, you don't get them back. <laughs> yeah, I was unable to retrieve the audio, try as I, try as I might. If any of our listeners are incredibly skilled hackers, they're like, hit me up i don't care if it's two years from now if i can go back <laughs> into the ether and get like the lost episode i'm gonna do it yeah we will yeah. be re-recording because mm -hmm. shit Let's... man i'll i'll talk about vox Mach legend of vox machina all day <laughs> right and what's crazy is that uh we do have my end of the recording yeah but not your end and so like yeah. that's um that's really where the problem comes into play so you could hear me talk to myself if you wanted me to post that i guess guys just let me know we uh, we are taking negotiations for half of the lost episode, um, but so that is where this is why episode three is being posted before episode two, and why episode two will be be posted later. Uh, so no, you're not crazy. No, we're not dumb. I just kind of got screwed, so <laughs> I apologize. Um, and we could have re-recorded this first, but at the same time, it's way funnier this way. Oh yeah. It's just it's way funnier. So, Stanley Parable. Fair warning. Spoilers start after this refreshing crack of beverage. Oh, yes. So, Stanley Parable. Do you want to talk about your first... Do you remember your first go-round? I'm trying to remember, like, how... When my first time playing was. Because I think my first time ever playing was on a live stream. Like, back in the earlier days of my channel. Um... And uh, before that, I had watched a couple of uh, playthroughs of it um, just because, like, I, I wasn't sure what it was. And yeah. so I also used this game for uh, teaching purposes. And That's so that right. was a, that was another reason why I was looking into it before I purchased it to see if it was something that I wanted to go for. And a couple endings in, I was like, yeah, I think I could uh, I think I could go for this. And so 
did it as a live stream. We went through all of uh, the endings that we could find in the original game. And then obviously recently we got the brand new uh, Ultra Deluxe Edition, uh, which and uh, which added a bunch of stuff. Uh, I, I was actually very, uh, very impressed with how much they actually added to the game. I love how one of their, I think one of their claims was more than twice the original amount of content. Yeah. Which is technically true. Which is the best part. Because when I started going through with the bucket, I was like, oh, what a fucking... What a... what a Like, that's so cheap. Like, that's hilarious, but that's kind of cheap. And then they still changed things. I was like, guys. Like, they subverted my expectations because the bucket. And then exceeded my expectations because the bucket changed everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh yeah it's insane how like if you go through to your usual endings but you have the bucket it gives you different endings like it's basically just like a trigger it's it's like a trigger at times to just say that like it is um it's it, it's a new part of the game here yeah and the uh the narrator kevin brighting by the way, who, like, I softly clapping for Mr. <laughs> Kevin Brighting because holy shit. Perfect like, not voice a, for like, a narrator. The, yeah. I, I mean, it really, I think it added to the game because it was, he he was, as a, you know, as a voice actor, obviously you have to portray emotions. Right. But he did such a good job when you perfectly followed instructions. It was just kind of monotonous. And not in like a bad way, but in like a Stanley went through the right door. It was like, okay, you're not going to say that full of emotion, but being able to say that just like deadpan. Yeah. Just like <laughs> he did a really excellent job of switching between storytelling, <clears throat> directing, and arguing. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> Stanley, what are you doing? <laughs> Come on now. Uh, Stanley, what are you doing? <laughs> no, go back. Why, why are you going that way? <laughs> Oh my god. So my first go around, um, I immediately when the narrator's like, go the right way, I was like, I don't trust you at all. No. Yeah. So I believe I believe the narrator says to go in the right door, I went in the left door. And then I saw the broom closet. No, no, so it was the um Stanley took the first open door on his left. So That's right. You're supposed to go left. And, Wait, no, uh, that's that's after you choose the two doors. There's the two open doors. Oh, all right, yeah. So, um, Stanley took the first open door on his left, and so you go through. If you were to go through the left door, it brings no, you into the conference room. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. And then you go to the, if you go to the, <laughs> the if you go to the right, it takes you to the staff lounge. But eager to get back to it, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Exactly. Well, no, the, no, no, no. If you go in the right door. You go to the conference room. Otherwise, you go to the coffee room, then the conference room. Because the conference room is where you figure out everyone's gone. Yes. Uh, I, well, I mean, like, you can choose to go to the conference room in either way. Because really? It gives I you never little... actually had that happen. Yeah, so, like, um, huh. so, yeah, if you go through the left door, it brings you directly to the conference room. If you go through the right door, you go into the staff lounge, um, and then after you go past the staff lounge, he goes, like, but eager to get back to work. Um, you can either go forward into like the warehouse area mm -hmm. or you can take a left through like a maintenance hallway uh, to get back on track to where you would have originally gone if you had gone through the door to your left, which would bring you to the conference room. Yeah, but so my <laughs> first one, if he I think he says take the door. And, I think you're right. It's the door on the left, whatever it is. Yeah, the when first Stanley choice came to a set of doors. two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Right. So I went to the door on the right. Gotcha. Because the broom closet was there. The broom closet was right? directly after the conference room. And so, like, if you go to the left or if you go to the right and then go to the, the door on your left, then it uh, will bring you back to the conference room, in which case then, yes, as soon as you exit the conference room, there's the broom closet there. Okay, so maybe I did listen to him at first. Then okay. I saw the broom closet and I was like, <laughs> fuck Yes, there's a closet. There's secrets in here. 
And when he was like, there's nothing here, I was like, that means there's something here. Uh, yeah, and then he starts making fun of you for a thing like, yeah, you're probably like, oh, he got the broom closet ending. <laughs> Which I'm very, like, I know it's a non-canonical ending, but I'm very upset isn't a canonical ending. That is possibly my favorite. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't know if you've gone on the broom closet m on multiple trips through. Ah, uh, yes. boards it the fuck up. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I'm pretty sure after three times he boards it up, I went, I, he boarded it up almost immediately for me. <laughs> right. Because yep. I kept going back in the fucking broom closet. Because <laughs> I was like, there's got to be something here. And the second time he's like, Stanley, really? He's there's just like, nothing can, there. you, can you not? <laughs> like, I just, I love that he's just like, hello, it, it, it seems that a person has died here. Can yeah. you move their corpse and finish the game, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally trying to call Lost out, my like, so yo, funny. um, I'm pretty sure that the, there's no way this guy could be this stupid. I think they're dead. Yep. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure the first ending that I got, so I had, like I said, I'd never played Stanley Parable. I picked it up beginning of May and I was like, all right, you know, I'll play a little bit here and there. You know, I sunk six hours into the game that night. That checks. I got all of the endings. <laughs> oh my goodness. I went hard. I think I forgot to eat dinner, or I got on right after eating dinner, and I played for so long that I was ravenous and then ate again. I think that second one's correct, because I think I started playing at like 7 or 8 p.m., and I stopped playing around 2 a.m. Wow. I was hooked. <laughs> <laughs> I Yeah, I, I can because see why. if you... Uh, ignored our earlier warning of, hey, don't play this game spoiler-free, screw you. I get it, but screw you. Um, uh, but also, the Stanley Parable is a game where you play an office worker named Stanley, whose job is to sit there. Actually, you do a great narrator impression. Can you find the opening dialogue? Do you have that? Uh, yeah, Can hold you on. Pull that up real quick. Yeah, of course I can. I'm I'm actually really impressed with your uh, <laughs> with your impression. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number four two seven. Employee number four two seven's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room four two seven and he put buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee number 427 did every day of every month of every year, and although others may have considered it soul rendering, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had shown up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked. Frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Damn, <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, but at this moment, you then get control of your character. And you can do whatever the fuck you want. One of the first things you can do, one of the endings, is you literally just reach up, close the door... And you're like, no, I will wait until I die yeah. for this. And that's how it ends. And the game just immediately restarts. And it just, instead of doing the, like, I think you can either skip it or it just immediately goes to Stanley stood up and walked out the door. No, so it doesn't say anything. It just says, like, the intro, like, broom, broom. and then as soon as you walk out, all of his coworkers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. And being able to just like, like my first go around, I was like, okay, it's kind of cool. I'm curious what happened, you know, which you'd never fucking find out, by the way. <laughs> uh, 
Like the end, the end is never the end is never the end is never that, the end. <laughs> okay, we're gonna come back to that. Okay. Cause trigger me timbers. But um damn. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but I mean it's like you can go through and like fuck with your coworkers' computer. Some of them have the computers on, you can go turn them all off, which I definitely did because I thought there would be something for it. Uh, it I believe there is something for one of them. It's there's a thing where it's like push any button. And if you do that for all five, you get the epilogue, I believe. Okay. You get some sort of ending if you push all five. Or maybe it's an achievement. I don't quite remember. It's but. it's something. I Yeah, I don't remember exactly myself. I just know that there is a... There is something. Right. But, I mean, it's... And, it's, and like we said before with the two doors, you have your choice of the narrator says, take the door on the right. You can go in the door on the left. And the game will try to steer you back to the conference room. And you can say, no, fuck you, I'm going to the warehouse. Right. Which then the narrator, instead of being like, eager to get back to it, he walks through the door and left. He breaks He breaks out of the narrator script. He's like, Stanley, what the fuck are you doing? Not not in that exact word, but like he's like, Stanley, what are you doing? Right. <laughs> he like starts talking to you. And it <laughs> freaked me out the first time. I was like, what? Because <laughs> my name's Stanley. <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, oh, God. There was uh, so many, so many good, so many good things. So if you follow the narrator's story, you get the whole, you know, oh my God, I was being watched the whole time. I'm going to shut down the facility. I'm free. Yep. And I was like, okay. You know, and it's just kind of like if you follow exactly what the narrator says, you technically get the happiest ending. Yeah. Which is... So that right there is just the perfect example of pretty much what uh, this game is all about. Because it really just ends up fucking with your idea of agency. Like, do you actually have free will or not? Because by following all of the steps that he provides you, you get, quote unquote, the happy ending. Yeah, which was which was which was kind of interesting because it was like i think i feel like in games like this like i was really expecting it to kind of be a bland ending Mm -hmm. and then the like there was going to be like the quote-unquote true ending you know what i mean which i i'm not gonna lie i'm on the fence about because part of me is like i i really like the they don't give you all the answers you know that's one thing about this game is like they they don't pull punches on some things like they will the game will trick you in some cases the game will absolutely pull on your heartstrings and fuck you over because of it (laughs) i'm looking at you marriage ending right going to your wife the fucking thing with the phone like fuck you narrator (laughs) the whole ending he basically is just taunting you he's just like what you thought you were important this is my story now like yep. he takes away the one thing you had, the agency of Stanley. You can't go down the hallway. He yep. blocks off every everything you can do except for restarting on your own terms or just following what he says. He's basically like, I'm sick of you not listening. Fuck you. Yep. You're gonna die alone. And this is the story of a death the death of a man named Stanley. I was like, Fuck you. <laughs> ha <laughs> Gotcha. Oh come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to... <laughs> I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. And yes, I've tried to walk away. Sorry, but you're in my story now. <laughs> yep. I, God damn. It was so... Oh, it was so good. Instead of trying to break down all of the endings of this game, because there are... I think there's 29 endings... 29 canonical endings. There are 19 endings in the OG game. Ultra Deluxe included an additional 24 endings. Got it. (laughs) So it's actually like, what is that? 43? And some of them are kind of repeats just with the bucket. Ah, yes. But uh, the bucket does change some of them. Like if you try to do the- Oh, no, absolutely. If you try to do the good ending with the bucket, the facility actually shuts the door back on you because it doesn't want the bucket to leave either. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's right all right i love the one i love the one where with the uh the never-ending line oh the adventuring line uh, the adventure line the uh, line yeah. the adventure line yeah 
Yup. Oh my god, the adventure line killed me. But just the music. Ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, Stanley. We'll, we'll make our own story. But the, the the thing with the bucket, I think the last ending I got, which I was like, okay, I'm done. If there's more endings, which there weren't, I was like, if there's more endings, I don't even fucking care. This mm-hmm. is the best. Was the fucking intervention ending? <laughs> oh, with the bucket, yes. <laughs> you, listen, like you gotta you gotta stop carrying the bucket around. Like, <laughs> remember the old characters like the adventure line and the wall. <laughs> who, can, who can forget the wall? <laughs> who could forget the wall? That, so that was funny. that was fantastic. On the note of fantastic endings, what's some of your favorites or what's your like jump uh, jumps to your head as one of your favorites? So my favorite is probably the one where um it shows you in other video games that he's just like, you know what? Maybe we'll try a different game because maybe it'll be better than the one that like I put together. And in the original, um, in the original one, um, they put you in Minecraft at one point. <laughs> um, and I'm blanking on the other one right now. There was another one that I was familiar with, but like, the most recent rendition of uh, they had Firewatch and Rocket League. Yeah. With... <laughs> and so I was shocked when I was just like, oh, this is one of my favorite endings. And then I'm sitting there and I'm like, wait, where am I? Holy shit, this is Firewatch. <laughs> did you ever play Firewatch? I did not, but I recognized it instantaneously yep, because same. like it's got we a very distinct. We might need to play distinct... that for the show, by the yeah, way. Oh, yeah. Um, it has a very distinct art style. Um, yeah, it's started, oh, it's so beautiful. It was at that point during my stream as well that I ended up having to lower the stream quality because all of a sudden Stanley Parable went from like taking up no resources, taking up all of my resources. <laughs> so once again, it seems like the game developers got it really well and basically said like my computer was shit. And <laughs> that's so funny. Just like every other like modern game that comes out like my biggest issue right now is the fact that my graphics card just cannot handle it. Like, and I got a 10 year old laptop. You can fucking cry. About <laughs> it. Actually. Um, no, nah, I won't get up on a tangent right now. I'll do it later. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is impressive that I caught myself. I can feel the half brain cell. Oh yes. We're going to be one and a half brain shared brain cells soon. Just True. kidding. We drink alcohol. <laughs> um, don't drink, kids. It kills brain cells. Wait till you're an adult. Then you'll want them dead. Um, <laughs> I'm not jaded. What are you talking about? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, this just got dark. <laughs> yeah, I might cut that. <laughs> don't. Okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, okay, so that was that was a great ending. Um, I think of the... Before the bucket, I'm not sure how many of these are technically deluxe endings. I don't think any of them, because like the deluxe endings were all kind of behind that door with the arrow, where it was like, you know, go this way, and it was like very clear it was the DLC. I can't remember exactly what the picture was. Not the picture. I can't picture what the actual thing said. <laughs> Good right. God. <laughs> but I ignored it until I found all the rest of the endings. Gotcha. Um, I think no, the first ending I got was the one where the narrator gets replaced by the female and you're just walking through the loop of rooms. Oh. <laughs> That's the first ending I ever got. Gotcha. Okay. Right? I think so. It's been a little bit since I've played. And also, it's very easy to lose yourself in the game because it is the same, but it's just like it's just like little tweaks are different, which was yeah. awesome. Small which was thing. honestly was like I think this is we'll have our we'll have a whole like recommendation or not thing at the end, but like this is a this is a hard game to nail down. Right. Like it feels like more of like interactable art installation than a video game yes you know what i mean yeah i i I see what you mean but anyway um favorite before the 
You know what? I I I was unhappy with kind of the nature of it, but I love the radioactive ending. Radioactive where he's gonna blow up the plant. Ending. And you have to like run, and you're like running around trying to like stop the countdown or the nuclear oh, ending, not the oh, radioactive, oh, the nuclear oh, ending. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Where you go to um, try to uh, you try to turn back on the mind control, and um, it, it hits the countdown because they're like, you know what? No, no, you're not getting this. Like you were yep. so close. Like now I'm just gonna blow you up. <laughs> I did that ending I think five times in a row. Really? And then I, because I was trying to stop the countdown. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. Like, OK, I was like, I didn't I didn't look up anything before then I had done. I must have been two or three hours. in at this point, I was like, OK, I am going to drive myself crazy. I looked it up and it was like, there's no way to stop the countdown. I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> but as much as it was kind of like a tease. It's like, right. Oh come on! Like it'd been so epic, day an ending where you actually stop the countdown. It yeah. it is one of the best endings in my opinion. Right, because it literally made you come back how many times to? Yep. Try to. <laughs> Not only that, I think it encapsulates the game really well, which is right. just that the game is, the game's impossible to nail down. Right. That kind of ending, like this game just really turns expectations on its head. It's really good about that. It does do a very good job of that. Yeah, I would I would agree on that. I also I'm curious. So you actually I don't I don't think I knew that you played the original game. I did. Yes, I played the original before playing the deluxe. And so um, that actually kind of helped me to uh, understand everything going on beforehand uh, a little bit more. But obviously I'd wanted to uh, give this one a shot yeah. um because i had um uh you know it, it was it, it was a lot of fun when i first played it and obviously i had used the uh i had used the um why do i keep losing my train of thought <laughs> i got How much have you had to drink tonight absolutely nothing that's why Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, first episode we did, I was uh, You were you were not that you were not that far I, in the bag. It was just I like, was on I had a couple of drinks in me though, and so it was a little bit easier to <laughs> It's fascinating how alcohol makes us function better. Well for me sometimes. it was like it was actually an idea of focusing. Like which is the weirdest thing. Like it shouldn't make me focus. Like I, I definitely need to see if i have some form of adhd because it is it is bad i will i will throw five bucks on the table right no screw that i'll throw my left nut on the table (laughs) like that's uh you guys don't know this but that's very valuable i mean they do know this now if it was the male (laughs) if it was the right nut it wouldn't necessarily uh that's true it, it wouldn't be worth as much it's true. It's a, it's a little bit smaller. I call it the underachiever. Um, <laughs> uh, shit, that's that's really funny. <laughs> Boy, we got off at a tangent quick. Uh, um, yes. Yes, we so, did. I'm curious. How did you like the, not necessarily the alternate endings of the bucket and everything, but like the middle part of the ending, or, or of the DLC, where it's like the Stanley Parable two and like all the like the games and like the collectible the Stanley collectible oh the Stanley collectibles those were funny as well the jump <laughs> the jump zone <laughs> oh my goodness I used up all the jumps immediately and didn't have any left over for later on same oh. <laughs> I was oh, just so screwed funny. so funny. It was very, very funny, I will say. The mostly infinite hole. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, you hit the bottom, and he's like, what? Wait. All right. Okay. Well, I, I guess I, 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 all right, listen, I can't, uh, I can't make this stuff. Like, I'm sorry that I, I lied to you, but, uh, yep. you know, I. <laughs> so good. But I, yeah, I loved the whole, like, uh, E3-esque stanley parable 2 thing like that was so funny yes that was funny um but 
so you touched on this earlier. I said we'd come back to it. The part where you have the skip button. Oh, yes. That was... That actually freaked me out a little bit. Yeah, well, there was... You can tell, like, they... um, Because when they added in, there was that... um, Like, there were a couple of times where... We saw the... um, Like, everything start to deteriorate a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And you could hear, like, weird noises happening. Oh, yeah. And almost as if, like, there was something freaky going on outside that was, like, hunting things and whatnot. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, the place was, like, shrunken into the uh, into the ground. And you walk outside and it's all desert. Like, everything is deteriorated around you. Yep. Honestly, that, that part was cool. Like, the mid, like, the second half where it's just, like, every time you click skip it starts just like the building starts cracking around you i thought that was so well done right because it was like you know the the skip button does the whole like expansive jumps for anyone that again disregarded our good intentions um (laughs) this the one of the things you can do in the dlc is a skip button where you push it because you can skip the narrator's voice because that was a suggestion that people had yes. given. He got really butthurt about it. It was fucking hilarious. It was very funny, but then like it kept on skipping exponentially as you pressed it. So like first time you skipped, it was a minute. Then it was ten minutes. Then it was an hour. Then it skipped like a week. Uh, then it was like a month. And like sometimes a narrator would be there. Other times he wouldn't be. And that was that was when he was sitting there at one point, just like the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end. and he would just keep going, and yep. it was like freaky as hell. And I'm like, oh, I'm skipping that. I'm die. Get out of yeah. here, please and thank you. Yeah, so that, that, that part, was freaky. <laughs> that part actually came, like the narrator had fallen silent for like three, four, maybe even five presses. Like, yes, at that point, the, I assumed the, the narrator skip. was gone. Excuse me. The place started, like, there started to be, like, rust showing and, like, some cracks in the walls and, like, noises. And, like, I think the one before it, there was, like, a noise. I was like, that's kind of weird. All right, skip. Eh. And then it just comes up. And the whenever you end, quote, unquote, end of the game, the backdrop is just repeatedly the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end. Like, that's the <laughs> the theme of the game is... There is a beginning, but, but there, there is, no, is end. no end. There's like the game's not over. The game is never over. And There's nope. never a stopping point. There's many, many beginnings, but they're all the same beginning. Right. There's many, many stories, but none of them ever end. They just go to the next beginning, and it's it's a again hard game to nail down. Really cool concept for a game. Um. And yeah, it was just, it was, it was wild. Yeah. Like that, that's a good way of kind of describing it. So the end is never the end was like a theme. So it wasn't like an out of nowhere, but hearing it said in just that way, cause there was a tinge of madness to it. Oh there was yeah. The, it's been 10,000 years or however long. The yeah. narrator has been alone. For 10,000 years. Yeah. He has seen us come back four or five times, said nothing. Yep. And has just completely lost it. Yep. And it's just, and it's just all you hear is the end is never the end is never the end. Is never. Like, yep. oh my God, it scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was just like, oh, I'm getting out of here. And then like the quiet also wasn't the best thing either. Like, because like it then all wasn't. of a sudden you start hearing weird noises and you're like oh, oh is something about to pop in here is stanley parallel becoming a horror game yeah right mm. but then like i think eventually this like music starts playing it's as soon it's as soon as you walk outside for the first time and they're able to get out of there and everything is deteriorated around you that's right but it's like it's honestly the last few skips right before the so you're able to get outside because you're locked in a box like your the room is basically just a concrete slab Mm -hmm. and the door that you got in on disappeared 
after like two or three skips and you don't realize until you turn around and then everybody's like um <laughs> what where's the door <laughs> <laughs> yeah door completely vanishes and you're left wondering how do i leave yep and the only way you can get out is by uh skipping ahead skipping ahead until the building deteriorates which is um yeah it's a little uh a little spoopy yeah not gonna lie <laughs> if anyone's ever watched futurama i don't know if i've brought it up in every episode so far which isn't many but still <laughs> get used to me bringing up futurama i love that show and um, naturally <laughs> the there's a there's an episode um where like kind of playing off the fact that fry's always late to things and the professor builds a f one way time machine where you can only go forward and they accidentally go to the end of the earth and oh. there's just nothing yep and it kind of reminded me of that that's one of my favorite episodes by the way uh it's <laughs> called the late philip j fry it's like the year 1 million or something and it's just the the world is gone. There is no living things left on Earth. Right. And that's kind of what it was like. Anyway, getting off of the Futurama train as yes, I am a as, I am a frequent I am a frequent rider as already. Um, yeah, you will. Um, yeah, you will be here forever talking about it. I I sure will. I'm gonna make you watch it at some point. Oh, that's um, fine. But. Uh, yeah, so that was the kind of feel for the end of the Stanley Parable. It's really cool because you see, like, on the skips before that, you see, like, the plants, like, going up and, like, tearing down the building. And just, like, putting, not even tearing down, like, just putting cracks in it, weakening the building. And uh, unless I'm mistaken, one of two things happens. Either the plants are all completely dead or the building was completely overrun by plants. And I think it was the second, which uh, was super Both cool. happen. Both happen. Right. No, I mean, like, at the very end where you can walk out, though, I think all the plants are dead at that point, correct? Oh, yeah, because everything's dead at that point. You just walk out, and it's a desert, and that's, that's it. That's what I thought. It was really, like, it, it was, I, I imagine if you have, um, oh, what's the opposite of claustrophobia? Oh, claustrophobia? like fear of really open spaces? Yeah. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, if I'm being honest. Agor oh, it is agoraphobia. Fuck yeah. Wow. I imagine, obviously, it's fucking terrifying uh, for people that don't like space or the ocean because of, like, the vastness. Oh, yeah. You know, same thing. For me, though, it was just kind of this very interesting, almost a poetic ending. Like, I walked around for a while. I was like, man, this is fucking sick. Yeah, eventually this they just really cool. cut it out for you, which I didn't like. I, yeah. I kind of wanted to explore a little bit more. I think there's, like, a... Pl I think there's, like, a... a, like a diameter or there's like a zone which is like the walk around zone and then as you go past that they gotcha off, yeah is, if you go too that's far that's my guess i didn't i don't think it was timed necessarily i feel like i went really far before they cut it off right 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 which i i think does make sense from a gameplay standpoint because also it's like a if you had to go back and hit the skip button again if you get lost you're just kind of fucked <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know so it did make sense and i thought i thought it was kind of cool because at that like for me at that point i'd done my exploring i was like i'm gonna walk as far as i can in this direction just see what happens right. and when i reset i was like okay yeah that makes sense so <laughs> maybe different experiences but right right i think that that was one of the that was really cool as much as the narrator the end is never the end thing freaked me the fuck out i think it wrapped <laughs> up really beautifully right and then when you're done with all that, you get the bucket. The bucket. Did you go in the broom closet with the bucket? Did I go in the broom closet with the bucket? I don't remember if I did. Did I don't you get think stickers on your bucket? Yes. Oh, so yes, I did. Yes. Now I remember. Now I remember. Yeah. Because the narrator starts making you basically fight with the broom closet. <laughs> Are you going to take that, Stanley? Yes. After what he said about your mother? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Something like that. So goddamn funny. Yep. And, and the broom just... closet's part of your uh, intervention as well. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness, you're right. <laughs> so funny. It is quite hilarious. So broom closet, I think, is my favorite ending. Mm -hmm. Hands down for both. I, 
I, I still think uh, the the multiple games ending is oh, uh, so cool. It is my favorite. That one took me by surprise because I didn't think that's what was actually about to pop up. Mm-hmm. That like kept me hooked because I was just like, oh, I know exactly what we're gonna see. We're probably gonna see some mine. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Because I didn't have the bucket. I was like, all right, if I get the bucket, they'll give me something new. But if I don't have the bucket, then I'll be able to uh, do something else. That is not what happened. <laughs> oh, I was kind of hoping that the bucket would change it a little bit. I was hoping it would, too. But I think they actually block off that area if you have the bucket. That's what I thought. Like, that's that seems right. Because I actually I was thinking about it. I was like, wait, I didn't do that anyway. No buckets no buckets beyond this point. <laughs> I yes, think have yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. And so that's where you, that's where you would go if you didn't have the bucket. <laughs> Here's one least favorite endings. And I see for the most part, I don't really have like an ending I didn't like per se. Agreed. Agreed. Um I guess if there was like maybe a weak ending the maybe the confusion ending Oh, is that the one where you... Wait, no. What was the confusion ending? So, the last room you see is basically saying, like, how many times it gets reset because they get confused about shit. And eventually, like, they're going to be like, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to reset it. No, I can't do that. Like, and it's, like, counting down how long it's taken you to do the confusion ending. Um, Because you keep on resetting because there's, like, the doors... uh, Like, you get to where the doors are supposed to be and there's either, like eight doors or there's none when Mm -hmm. you get in there (laughs) and um well it was funny like the first time around i think for that one you know upon revisiting it it um it ended up being just like too long for not enough payoff for me i guess yeah now was it funny the first time around yeah sure right i don't think there's a bad ending Oh, correct. But there's also the there's favorites and least favorites. It's the ones we think back on and go, kind of go, eh. Oh, yeah, Which exactly. I think the confusion is good. One I actually was not a super big fan of, just like, I think it was a solid ending and just personally was not a fan. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the exact ending, but the one where Stanley, it, it's like Stanley was like wandering around and has like a brain hemorrhage on the sidewalk. Oh, yes, the insane ending. So, like, yeah. you, you're walking around, the doors keep repeating, the narrator is basically saying that, like, everything is going really bad, and we're freaking out, uh, and then everything goes black. And then yep. he's lying on the sidewalk, there's a woman kind of, like, watching him, like, laying there. And She's, she like, late to work or something. Yeah, so she's just like, yeah, but I'm late to work, and I don't need to be late to work. I got some people to impress. And yep. then, like... <laughs> like, honestly, for me, I was like... It just kind of gave me, like, a weird, like, ugh, feeling. Mm-hmm. Well, I, like, I was just of, like, I was like, ugh. I had, a, I had a bit of a feeling like that for the ending where you decide to just end it all. And, like, you go up the flight of stairs multiple times and keep on throwing yourself yes! off. The one where the the narrator's just, like, begging you to stop. Like, yes. oh, oh, that was the one I was going to, that was going to, that's my least favorite. I was going to bring that one up next because right. that ending i legitimately was like uncomfortable with yeah it was a little uncomfy if he did it like the one time and they ended it i'd be like okay yeah fine. but no it was the repeatedly throwing yourself off and the narrator just like begging and then finally being like fine whatever i'm like, not gonna stop you oh, like whoa i did right. like not to get too deep but like as somebody that has friends that have absolutely had thoughts of suicide not okay with it <laughs> yeah that one just kind of left a, a bad taste in my mouth i could see what they were what they were going for 100 like, percent. um it's not necessarily something to like not play the game over it's just like right. it's meant to be uncomfortable right agreed i just think it was like <sighs> i like i don't ever remember seeing a trigger warning with like this game contains references to suicide. Like, if it had had some sort of thing like that, I think it would have been less uncomfortable. Like, if it has something, it's not super visible. Right. And I'm not I'm not somebody that gets triggered easily, but again, I've had my... 
I've had my friends. I've had my, you know, yes. I, I've had people close to me that I care very deeply about, like struggle with this. Right. And so I can, I can totally understand like, you know, the need for a, uh, a trigger warning there because it right. would definitely be something that would be super helpful for sure. Yeah. And if it was just the one time, yeah, the ending was a, it was a good ending. I totally get the, what they get. I totally get what they were going for. Uh -huh. I think it fit the game very well. It puts you in uncomfortable, strange situations. I just think that one pushed the envelope too much for my comfort. And that's a fair point to make. But ending on a on a slightly lighter note. Yes. We're we're gonna we'll we'll wrap this up. We you know maybe a little bit of a shorter episode, but yes. Stanley Parable is a very cut and dried kind of game. Yes. Um, and there's I mean the thing is there's also so much we didn't talk about, mm -hmm. and I think even if you haven't played the game or you haven't played the ultra deluxe version, and you're listening to this and you get to this and you're like oh I might pick this up like personally. I think it's worth picking up, but it's hard to recommend. Now, I kind of want to get your thoughts on this. Would you really? recommend this game to some to just someone? I would very much recommend this game. I, I'm curious to see your your take on uh, why you would not recommend it. Simply because I think it's a very niche game. Ooh, okay. Because, like, a game I think, like... um. Oh, it's a simple game. A game like Skyrim, mm -hmm. classic game, or Oblivion, any of the any of the Elder Scrolls games, classic games. Right. You know, really open ended, kind of do what you want. It's very easy to say, hey, you like video games? You'd like Skyrim, because you probably would. <laughs> right. There's very few people that actively game that I don't think would that would say like, oh, I hated Skyrim. You know. Right. That well would legitimately hate it. I think people will say it because people think having a dissenting opinion, you know, makes you interesting. Fun fact, <laughs> it does not. Um, I'm possibly railing against old Robbie. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, totally was never that person in high school. Ugh. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, but the Stanley Parables one, like. My sister, my older sister, recently got into games. She recently just picked up Breath of the Wild. Mm, mm -hmm. Have you played Breath of the Wild, by the way? I have not. Um, have a Switch, but don't have that. Um, <laughs> I, I haven't. I haven't purchased a. I haven't purchased really any games recently, and so. That's fair. That's fair. When I get my copy back from my friend, I'm immediately sending it to you. I consider it one of the best games ever made. Wow. And I say that knowing exactly what that means. I still think anyone that's played it, I think, will agree. Breath of the Wild is one of those games where it's... I don't think... Have you ever played a Legend of Zelda game? Um, I've never beaten one, but I have played them before. Ocarina of Time? Yes. Fuck the Water Temple. <laughs> um, I, I, I didn't get that. I didn't get that far, though. I, I don't think Ocarina of Time translates well because we have so many things in the game where it's just like i'm super fucking lost in ocarina of time they're like i don't care yeah <laughs> and there's a lot to be said for games that are kind of like hey you kind of want to go in this general direction yeah hey if you're lost talk to this person they'll help you we're not going to hold your hand yeah but we're no, going to help you there is no, absolutely no hand holding in in that in uh, Ocarina of Time because I remember when I uh, when I when I tried playing it, I was a little bit younger and didn't quite understand some of the intricacies of games like that, and so yes. like I just got frustrated very very quickly and just moved on from it and didn't return to it, and so like yeah, and, and I mean that's a that's a hard game. <laughs> yes, but that's that's your only experience with Legend of Zelda, correct? Um, I believe so because I I didn't play Twilight Princess in, mm -hmm. on the Wii. I didn't have the GameCube. You know what? I did play a Zelda game on the DS, the Nintendo DS. I don't remember exactly what it was though. Was it recently or was it like older? 
Um, I mean, it came out for the DS. Hold on. I'm going to look up uh, Phantom Hourglass. That's the oh, one yeah. I had. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's the one I had. Did you beat um, that one? Or? I did not. Yeah. Um, I got part of the way through it and uh, didn't make it very far. But Breath of the Wild is a game that you you know the basics of Legend of Zelda. You know mm-hmm. who Link is. You know who Zelda is. Yep. With nothing more than that, I'm telling you right now, it's going to become one of your favorite games. Mm, okay, solid. And that's one of those games where I think it's, I can recommend Breath of the Wild to literally anybody that's ever played a video game. And I know they're going to get a some level of enjoyment. Right. Okay. But the Stanley Parable, I think, is a really... It is a game where... I loved it, but I... Like, I, I don't think I could go back and replay it. Gotcha. Okay. You know what I mean? I regret nothing about spending money on this game. Mm-hmm. Playing but... this game. I think it is wonderful. Right. I don't think there's a ton of replay value for me personally. Mm-hmm. But... You know, it's just not something like... It's not something that lends itself to replay. Right. I don't think. Yeah, but at the same time, like, you appreciate what it was, essentially. Exactly. The thing is, again, though, I would have a hard time openly saying I recommend this. It is a... It is an indescribable experience. Right. I think even if you watch someone play, playing it yourself, being put in the shoes, and, like, being forced to choose sometimes taking having that choice taken away from you right cannot be experienced through a let's play that's fair i also don't think that's necessarily for everyone right you know that's why that's why i say i'm not sure because it's i think if you're curious about it Mm -hmm. one thousand percent you will not regret it okay all if right. you're not, though, if you're like, eh, it doesn't sound like my thing, you know, I still think it. it's worth picking up. Maybe you wait till it's on sale. Right. But it's still, it is, it is an experience I think everyone should have. That doesn't mean I recommend doing it. Right. I imagine it's kind of like skydiving. I think anyone that's ever skydived is like, you should absolutely try it once. Yeah. yeah you know what fair. I mean? Yeah. So... Okay, you know what? With that context, I can totally understand. For me, I just, I I feel like, you know, some of the humor is something that, like, should be experienced regardless if you're playing it or not. So that means, like, if it's something that maybe somebody doesn't want to spend money on, like, watch watch five minutes of it. If you don't like it at that point, then just, you know, move on with your life. But if you do, go for it. I think that's, I 1000% agree. It's not an expensive game. It's a full... I think it's like one developer. I think it's like... I think it's similar to like Stardew Valley. It's a single person. I think they have a, a team, but it's just not a very large studio. Oh, okay. Oh, no way. No, that makes total sense. So, same people who made this game also made Accounting Plus, the VR game. Oh, of course they did. Yep. And so... um. That that just that checks. Yep. <laughs> so um yeah, I don't really know. Um well, let's see here. About I was gonna say, I'm kinda of shocked they don't have a Stanley Parable VR game. They kinda do. <laughs> yeah. We're a Berlin based studio working on unique experimental video games. Crows, 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 and their logo is a crow sitting on a hammer. That's 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 all we got. <laughs> that's all right. I mean, honestly, again, it's a it it's a hard game to kind of talk about. Yeah. You know, because like, it's think something it's, that's it, half of it is the experience. I took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. Um. Do we want to talk about what we're so? Do we want to talk about the next game or should we keep it a secret? Honestly, I think we should tell people because then they can like maybe play it for themselves. So uh, go ahead and make the reveal. There is a game on Steam, a demo, called Warhammer 40,000, Shooters, Blood, and Teeth. T-E-E-F. Yes. It is an orc-based side-scroller. If you know Warhammer, 
Think orcs, but castle crashers. If you don't know Warhammer, think castle crashers, but weird. <laughs> that, but that, that's still just castle crashers. I, I said what I said, Justin. The castle crashers, but weird. Like it's, it's just castle crashers then. No, but with no, guns. it's not. It's castle crashers, but weird. Oh, wow. Like imagine okay. if castle crashers was normal. This is weird. <laughs> I, I don't know how to comprehend that sentence. Cause... Except by playing it. It is a totally free demo. It is. Okay. I have seen a little bit about this game. It looks amazing. I haven't gotten to play it yet, but I've seen a little bit. I believe the release date is in October of 2022. It looks like October 20th is when it's available, uh, when the, the game is available. Okay, perfect. The reason we're playing this game, I, I, I'm not a, an expert or anything of the sort on Warhammer, but I really like the lore. My favorite army is orcs. I just got a kill team box with the de Death Corps of Krieg and the orcs. Big fan of the orcs. Justin <laughs> knows nothing about Warhammer. I, I know not a single thing. I have not uh, I've not gotten into it before. So So Justin does not know what DACA is. He does not know why. So if you know Warhammer, I think this will be amusing because it will be a totally brand new foray into Warhammer into a game based off of orcs with no context. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also I think the main reason we're doing this, or the main reason that I want to do this, and Justin has graciously allowed to be a guinea pig, is I don't know how much of this game is just, it's a solid game, mm -hmm. and how much of it is going to kind of be carried on the back of Warhammer Orcs being Warhammer Orcs. Right. So we're going to get two different viewpoints. We're going to get somebody that, me, knows Warhammer, loves Orcs, and someone that like Justin that knows nothing, right? Yeah, because uh, yeah, I don't I don't know a singular thing about Warhammer. If you know about Warhammer, you like it, and you've like and you've never heard about this game, it's free. Download it and play it. The <laughs> voice it is a voice acted game. Oh, okay. There's hair squigs. I don't think I need to say anything more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited to play it. That's that's fantastic. I think that's uh that's it. Any any closing statements before we uh, wrap this up, Justin? Well, I appreciate sharing this brain cell with you. Um, because uh, listen, we're not functioning without our so. <laughs> nope. God no. <laughs> I believe we're a marvel of science. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's kind of a good way of uh, putting it. Like the fact that we miraculously uh, keep our shit together especially when we're not actively um, engaged with one another. Like, yeah. Oh, I can't, I can't wait till the day we can re record a podcast episode in person. The chaos is going to be fucking real. <laughs> oh, chaos freaking incarnate is oh, going to so be excited. exactly what is going on. So, well, on that note, my friend, take us home. Yes. This has been One Shared Brain Cell. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. And hey, if you want to find me anywhere in terms of any of my stuff on Twitch, The G Teacher, on YouTube, The Gaming Teacher, I do lots of reaction videos to all the favorite shows that you could potentially want. Lots of mm -hmm. reactions to trailers and whatnot. Uh, potentially also some uh, some new videos that uh, Robbie's been working on soon, so uh, be on the lookout for those as well. Uh, look forward to uh, posting those, so definitely make sure to subscribe uh, so that way you don't miss out on anything. Uh, you can also find me TikTok, Twitter, Facebook I don't really do much with, Instagram, same thing, don't do much with, but you can find me on all those places, and uh, that's about it for me. Sounds good. I'm not on social media. Uh, you can try to find me on Reddit, but, you know, hey, man, it's your eyes. <laughs> Scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Later, everybody.